Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do another alternative manga spotlight today on Comics Underground Japan. This is published by Blast Books, uh, edited by Kevin Quigley. This is an anthology of various gekika uh, mangaka, um, so it's short stories by uh, I believe 12 different mangaka all listed here on the back. I was particularly excited for Suihiro Maro and Takashi Nemoto because I was familiar with some of their other works. Um, and some of these other names were familiar to me in terms of just like recognizing the names, but I didn't know if I had read anything else by any of these people or um, like in other anthologies or just I couldn't off the top of my head think of other works by them. Uh, that I may be familiar with, but Suihiro Maro and Takashi Nemoto uh, were two that I, I was very familiar with. Um, so this, I love anthologies. Um, I love seeing a single collected book full of various different creators, uh, whether it's on a similar topic or not. This one in particular is not about a, sim a, a particular topic. Uh, it's just different Gakika works collected. Uh, this is very similar to Axe Alternative Manga, which I also have. Uh, that one is larger. It compiles more stories than this particular one. Uh, this one's decently short, but uh, if you enjoyed Axe Alternative Manga, that release, you will also very much love this. Uh, this is probably, and I know I feel like I say this for every title I read, but this is probably um, one of my favorite uh, Gekika titles that I have read uh, in a long time. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I thought every story was interesting, even if some of them were better than others. I thought that all of them had something um, entertaining, at least, to me. Um, they didn't feel so far out in terms of, like, like, I got something from every single one. Sometimes you read Gekika and it's just, like, so existential or whatever. Just, like, you're just looking at it going, what am I looking at? Which is fine, because that's a lot of what Gekika is. But these ones, I just felt like I could understand my own interpretation of what was happening, um, as opposed to just being left being like, what did I just look at? Um, as you can probably tell from this cover, uh, this is full of just horrendous, um, disturbing ridiculousness, uh, and I love it. But if you are sensitive to violence or uh, gore or, or horrible imagery, um, steer clear. This one's not for you. Uh, but another thing to mention, I mentioned the publisher, Blast Books. Uh, it looks like it is printed in the English direction. However, that's just where, how they put the cover. I've never seen a manga printed this way, where the cover is in the English direction, but it actually does start from the Japanese reading direction. Um, so when you open up the book, it does have a note in the front that you start at the other end. I just think that's a bit, like, I guess it's so in displays. But, like, even if the cover was the correct orientation, a store would see that this is clearly the back cover and they wouldn't... I don't know. I, I don't know what the... What the um, who made this decision, uh, I just thought it was very strange um, because any manga collector would have a bunch of stuff in their collection that wasn't printed this way. Anyway, I mean, I appreciate that they printed it in the Japanese direction, the reading direction, but I just thought that putting the cover on this way was a very strange decision to make. Um, anyway, this was fantastic. I guess I can try and find some examples. Um, nope. There is so much horribleness. This is an okay one. Um, this is Masakazu Toma, um, Steel Pipe Melancholia. I just, like... The other thing, too, so at the end... Sorry, I'm jumping around thought-wise here. The, at the end, it does give a decent paragraph about each mangaka. Uh, so you get a little bit about their history with Gekika and manga in general, who they are, uh, kind of what their vibe was with their titles. I just, I really enjoyed it. I ended up, I, I, I read it in the way that I read the story, and then I went back and read the author 
biopic or whatever you would call it. Um, so I did it like one to one as opposed to reading all the manga and then reading all the author uh, spotlights because I figured it would just be easier for me to appreciate the work more if I read the first story and then came and read about the, the mangaka right in the back. Um, this was fantastic. I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. There's a lot of themes of war in this one. Um, I'm just, oh my lord, okay. There is so much horribly disturbing imagery. Um that it's very difficult. Well, that, yep, nope, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. There's just a lot happening here. I'm just trying to make sure before I show anything. So this is the Suihiro Maru title. Um, so the art is obviously phenomenal. Uh, but it just, I really enjoyed the vast, vast difference between the different stories here. Uh, and then this is the art of um, Pan M Migiwa. Um, like such a stark contrast to some of the other art that's in, oh good god. Some of this is just so horrendous to look at. Um, but yeah, I there's not much to say about this really because it's you don't want to spoil each individual story and then also the fact that I really can't show you much because it's horrible horrible imagery that you need to you know pick this up and, and look at it yourself and here's one uh, this is cat noodle soup um, by Nekojiro and Hajime Yamano. Like, I just love the differences, huge, huge differences between the, the way that these mangaka tell stories. And, you know, reading the, the notes at the back about each particular mangaka was so fascinating to, you know, hear about their career. And some of these people really had very short careers and then quit the industry altogether. And it's so fascinating um, that, that, in this one book are collected works of people who are still creating to this day or people who were so prolific at a specific t period of time um, versus people whose stuff kind of went decently unnoticed and they just kind of disappeared. Um, they, they wrote a few things and drew a few, a few things and then just decided that they were going to back away from the industry. and. Highly, highly, highly recommend Comics Underground Japan. I've had my eye on this for years and just kept putting it off because I went, yeah, it's whatever. I'll get it eventually or maybe I won't. And finally, I bit the bullet and just went, you know what? I, I want to see what this is all about. And I have to say, even with Axe Alternative Manga being a much longer uh, anthology or collection of Gekika short stories, this one really packed a punch. Um, Twelve clearly like expertly curated stories about various topics, but all kind of like, they're all so vastly different, but they didn't feel out of place next to each other. And I really appreciated that because I was able to read this all in one sitting and not feel overwhelmed or not feel tired. I find that with Gekika, sometimes you're like reading it and you're going, okay, like maybe I need to take a little bit of a break from this. And this one was, like I said, it's got a lot of horrific imagery in it, but I never felt like tired or, or overwhelmed by, by what was going on. I think that all the stories were just the correct length um, to allow you to like process what was happening and then move on to the next story and be just as engaged and interested in what was going on in the next one. Um, and the fact that I was able to jump back to the, to the back of it and read about each author as well was really helpful because it allowed me to read the story, have my own feelings about it, and then go and read about the mangaka and be like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Their whole vibe kind of revolves around this particular topic, or uh, this is something they're passionate about, or uh, this was the period of time that they were really, you know, deep into creating manga. Um, all of this to say, go pick this up. If you like Gekika titles, pick this up. Uh, it's really, really well done.
I think it's just the right amount uh, of stories and just the perfect curated list of creators with very different styles and, and you know, views of the world. Um, and yeah. And I also liked too that the cover is created by uh, like an artist who is separate um, and there's a little blurb about the artist of the cover as well. Uh, and I enjoyed that. I thought that was interesting rather than like picking a, a panel or a particular artwork from one of the mangaka who were featured, they chose, you know, a completely different artist. Uh, I don't know if this, I mean, this is a curated North American release. I don't know if this is similar or mirrored from a Japanese release. I, I doubt it, but anyway, go pick this up. It's amazing. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I will definitely reread uh, this one again, uh, probably sooner rather than later, which is interesting because most Gekiga titles, I'm just like, okay, I need a break from this uh, for a while. But this one thoroughly intrigued me, um, and I'm excited to reread it at some point soon. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, if you have other alternative manga recommendations, do let me know. Let everybody know in the comments. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching.